We are going to look number one at DOM. And with DOM, we're going to talk about how to write XML with DOM. And then we'll talk about how to uh, read XML with DOM. We are going to talk about QXML streams. We we'll just write here XML streams, XML uh, stream. And here we'll talk about how to um, how to write XML. And we'll also talk about how to read XML. Then number three, we are going to talk about SACS. And here we'll only talk about how to uh, read XML. So that's these are the only items we need to touch when it comes to uh, to XML. And today we are going to look at an example and discuss how to write XML with um, with DOM. If we can do that, then it means we have achieved. So. Let's let's look at an example, and then we can discuss everything we need to discuss um, using this example in terms of XML. And yeah, and we just go on like that. Let me just do this quickly here. So we're going to look at this question, which is one of um, the assignments we've done before. And it says, study the guest house project that is provided under my UNISA. So for this question, you were given... Um, a guest house project that you were supposed to look at. And it says it's a console application. Modify guest house so that it becomes a graphical user interface application where a user can add a booking, check whether there's a vacancy in the guest house during a specified time period and find out how many rooms are available on a given date. Thus, the user interface should have appropriate widgets to enable the user to achieve these tasks. Um, in order to support the realization of bookings, expand guest house, so that the list of bookings managed by a booking list can be written to a file in an XML format, and a booking list object can be recreated with a list of bookings read from an XML file. DOM should be used for creating an XML format of booking list, and SACS should be used to pass an XML file of bookings to create an instance of booking list. Given below is an XML format that can be used for saving a booking list object, the XML format should have the same number of elements for booking and the attributes for booking, contact guest, but the order of the elements and attributes can be different from the other given below. Booking list object should be saved automatically when the, user, when the GI is closed to a file chosen by the user. Similarly, when an application starts, it should give the user an option to read from an XML file, make use of the standard QFL dialog to assist the user in setting da da da. da. You are allowed to modify these classes as desired according to the best practices that they want. So yeah, that's the question. So I know it's a bit of, you know, a lot of logic to understand right now. We are not going to focus a lot on the GUI in terms of checking whether there are rooms available. You can always play with these things if you want in your spare time and see, you know, just to enhance your programming skills and just get them to understand how things work. But we want to. We won't really be spending much time discussing um, the GUI functionality. Most of our time is going to be spent in this lesson and the next one on DOM and how to write XML with DOM. That's exactly what we want to look at. Then um, we can then in a separate lesson talk about SACS and how to read XML with SACS. So when we are back here and trying to understand how to use SACS to read XML, we are going to come back to this example and see how we can use SACS to read XML. But for this first example, we're going to focus only on how to write XML with DOM, and that's it. So before you can write your code, it's very critical and important to understand your question, right? What's required and you know, understanding the logic of what's really going on in this question. So if we look at the classes involved in, in, in this question, we've got um, a booking, um, which represents a booking. And for every booking, there's a contact person. So that's why you see a booking as in a composition relationship with person here. So for every booking, there's a person, and a booking is an arrival date, departure date. And for every booking, we need to know 
um, the single person, like in this case, there was a lot of other stuff going on. This is from a different uh, thing, but it's very close to what we're trying to do. So there's a booking with a contact person arrival date because we won't be touching the prizes for a single sharing booking, but these were all part of the question. Then um, we've We've got two types of bookings, a single booking, which is for one person, and a sharing booking, which is for two people. And for a single booking, we only have one guest, which is, again, an object of type person. And for a sharing, again, we've got two guests here, which are, again, objects of type person. So a person can either be a contact or can be a guest. So we're going to create instances of persons, um, which could be as a contact person or as a guest, but we are going to be using this class to represent any person. And I'm saying persons because I'm just pluralizing this object name person here, right? So we we this is what the application looks like, and every booking is stored in a list with a sort of type booking. Um, so yeah, it's just a, and your booking list is responsible for checking how many rooms are available, um, which period of you know, between two dates, we have a vacancy and you can add a booking. So a booking list is responsible for keeping your list of bookings and you've got the whatever number of bookings your application allows, which is going to be a constant variable stored here. So that's what this all looks like, right? And we are going to come back and talk about XML really, but I don't want to dive straight into XML so you understand what's really going on in this application because then it may prevent you understanding what we are really doing here when you so I, didn't, I need you to understand the application that you're going to create how it works um, the classes involved what they do and then we can come back here and talk about how to create this XML but just to preempt you this is simply serialization of your data so um, XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. It's one of the many formats used for sending data between two applications. Um, it's a data format, which is hierarchical. So there's a hierarchy. So as you can see here, we've got a booking list, which is made up of many bookings. And a booking is made up of a contact number, a contact person, an arrival date, departure date, a guest, and another guest if there are two, or just one guest if there's one. So we'll come back and break this down. But this is simply the data that we have in our application. And we simply want to write that to a file and be able to come back and read this data and recreate a booking list. So come back here and discuss this further. So what you are given in this question is a, a, a partially done solution where they did some of the classes required for, for this question. Um, let me just quickly... We won't be doing the whole thing from scratch just for the sake of time. So what I'm going to do is, um, so if we come here, we have a booking class, which has a contact, an arrival date, and a departure date, right? And then we've got the price for a single person and the price for a sharing uh, booking. So these are all the hard-coded values. So would, and these are used for calculating the rate that you have to pay for a booking and type represents a booking type, which means it can be a sharing booking or it can be, um, it can be a single booking. So if we come back to our UMO diagram, we are saying that your booking has these, you know, a contact person, arrival, departure date, and the price for a single booking or a sharing booking. And then the rate function is used to calculate how much you need to pay based on your arrival date and the departure date. And as you can see, it's in italics, which means it's a pure virtual function. That means it's only implemented here and here, but we won't be going too deep into that. So if we come back to our, to our uh, classes, so this was all provided, right? They give you all these functions and you can see it's pure virtual. We can go through the, um, the list and your booking has um, virtual person guest one. I don't know why this was important, but yeah, we do know that. Our person class is also very simple name, contact number, and email, and your 
get functions, we use the constructor for setting the values. The name is required, contact name is required, email is optional. That's why you see that it's defaulted to an empty string. That means it's an optional attribute. You, may, you can provide it if you want, or you can actually ignore it completely if you want. So that's person for you. So you see that in booking, we've got a variable of type person somewhere on a private, which represents our contact there. Um, protected simply means that these are accessible from a, a single booking, which is inheriting from booking. And we've got our guest and the you know constructor, our string function, our rate function, which is used to calculate how much you pay. And it also returns get guest one if you want to get the first guest. Then we've got our sharing booking, which has two guests, and it defines a get guest two function, um, which returns the second guest. So again, it's a string function. So these are all very simple classes that are just inheriting from your booking instance. So that's single, that's sharing with your two get guests functions that are not reflected here. But um, so we've got a booking and these two types of bookings, both using an object of type person to represent a contact or a guest, depending on which class you've got. So that's why you see these lines here in the UMO class diagram. So that's the person class. Then that's all there is. The booking list class is, uh, you know, it doesn't inherit from a queue list as per the diagram, but it does use it under private. Inheriting from a queue list could have been an option, um, but this was all provided. And you can see it has this constant number of rooms. It's got a whole bunch of functions, rooms available. You This checks whether there's a room available on this given date. Um, so I think it returns the number of rooms that, that are available. It checks whether there is a vacancy between these two dates. Um, you can add a booking and stream. So your application must utilize these functions to create a booking, which means you need to check if there's an available booking between the two dates and da -da -da -da, whatever you need to do, you can then do. So your logic for your main function can simply just use those two functions those functions in booking list. We won't really talk much about the implementation of these functions. You can go through this code if you want. Again, I'll post this code for you to play with if you just want to learn and see how this was done and so forth. But we won't be discussing this in this lesson. So the functions, I'm assuming, do what they need to do, and I won't be touching them. Um, in our main function, the original solution provided by Unisa looks like this. Obviously, I did comment this out because I wanted to check if it builds, but um, it's given to you like this. And what they do here is they make an instance of a booking list. They create a whole bunch of person instances, some to use as contacts, others to use as guests, and takes today's date and it creates a booking. It uses... This one is a quant, uh, the booking, make booking is a function that is attempting to make a booking and the function receives the booking list, the contact person, the arrival date, departure date, and the guest. Um, so here the guest is the contact person. Here you've got the contact person. So these are just random objects just to show you the intent of this application. Otherwise, the question wants you to convert it from a console application to a GUI application. So what you would then do is just go ahead and delete all of this because you don't need it. So just go delete. And once you remove all of that, um, the only thing I need in my main function is the, the usual, as per usual GUI application is your widget, which you then show. So if you show your widget, the next thing you want to do is to go into your widget and create a user interface, um, define your layout, your whatever you want to do, and and use an interface that shows you that can allow you to create those bookings. I've done this in advance because I don't want to sit around and type all of these, you know, widgets and you know, building the user interface. Um, so. What I've done is it's a very simple user interface. Um, let's run it and see what it looks like. We've done quite a few solutions together and I've shown you guys how to build a user interface. So I won't be 
explaining how to do this because I'm assuming by now you know how to do it from our previous lessons. You know, previous examples, I've done the whole thing from scratch and we've done assignments and we've been doing user interfaces. So I think by now you know how to create a simple user interface. But what I've got here is a name, email, telephone, name, email, telephone for our guest. And what you can do actually is um, I could have these at the top row so that I can first check which you know type of booking I want. If it's single, then I can gray out the second uh, these uh, second guest options. I can gray these things out. If it's a sharing, then I can activate everything. Then you can type whatever you want, and then so you can play around with your user interface really when you're doing a question like this one, so that it reflects the intent and you can design it the way you want. It doesn't have to look like this. And for this question, they didn't even give a picture to show you what they were expecting. So you could really just be creative and come up with your own user interface. But today, our main focus is on XML. So I won't be touching a lot of other things, but for us to get there using this example, you have to understand what we are doing here. You've got to understand the, the, the logic, the solution, how it works, so that you can also understand how to create the XML and how to read and recreate these objects from the XML. And what you want to do is once everything works, you would put a contact name with all the details here. Then you, uh, you select the type of booking. When you add booking, you take all these details and you create a booking, which means your booking goes into the booking list uh, instance. And then when you click write bookings, this is where our interest is. We then want to serialize all those bookings and create an XML document. So we won't do that. We, we won't do everything today. I think today we just want to set up the example, understand what we are trying to do, and then we'll go deeper into XM1 implementing this function probably in our next class, depending on how we go with time today. So, yeah, any questions at any point in time, please feel free to jump in so that we can move together because if you lose me in terms of how this works, you may not be able to understand exactly the code we're going to write for the XML. So, the first thing you need to do is add a booking, right? So I've created a, a function, a slot in our widget, uh, add booking. And this is where we need to create a booking. To do that, we need to go to our booking list and use this function, add booking. Now, this function expects a person instance for contact, person, a, an arrival date, a departure date, the guest. And the second guest is optional. So it's always defaulted to, to a null value. Otherwise, um, at least one guest is required. I am not going to touch on these other functions, which should check the vacancy, whether rooms are available. Like I said, you can play with the solution and you know just ensure that there's a booking available. But I, I think if you try and add a booking that's not available, this function is going to return false. So it's going to check if there's a vacancy, and if you've got two guests and decide which booking you're trying to create, whether it's a single way sharing. So all of that is handled by this function, which then means, yeah, that this function handles it for you. So I'm just going to add bookings that won't clash. Um, if we go into this class, we also need to know how many bookings, how many rooms are available. It's a constant variable, which means it has to be set once. So if we go in our booking list class, we should see somewhere where this is being set. And that's where it's set. It's set to five. So there's only five rooms available. You can change these values if you want to play around with it. Um, we should be able to also see these constant uh, data members being set in our booking class for the rates and everything. So if you check in here somewhere, um, we have we must have um somewhere we are setting these values and that's yeah that's there this one is set at 300 so it's set at 500 so everything should work so for our discussion we are simply going to just create a booking by calling this function of the booking list we would do it maybe twice or thrice for three four bookings um yeah two three bookings and then see that, yeah, and then we can try and serialize this to XML. Okay. To do that in our widget, you've got to include your booking list because you want to use it here, right? And you want a booking list that you can then use. 
So you are going to, you know, hash include your working list, right? They you are required to do forward declarations. Um, so yeah, something like this. But I will, yeah, we will discuss this later. Um, once I've got a booking list, I can then make an object here of type booking list. I can go booking list, booking list. I don't, it doesn't have to be a point or anything. It's just a list of bookings. And once I've got a booking list here, I can then start calling its functions in my add booking function. So every time I click my add booking button, it's going to take me to this function. And I'm going to use details on the widgets to then add a booking. So I can go booking list or add uh, booking and provide everything that this function requires. So if we look back, we need a person instance for the contact, arrival and departure date. So I can then here create a person instance from my line edits. So I've got, I created email, C, C name, C email, C telephone. These are the three line edits for the first row, which is the contact details. So I can simply create a person instance. I can go person contact and assign my name, my name, contact number, and my email. So let's just see that it's in that order here. It's name, contact number, and email. That's perfect. So here, for my name, I can go cname.text. Come on. My intelligence refuses. .text. That's for my name. For my contact number, I can go c Telephone, the text, and then for my email, if it's provided, here I'm just going to assume that it's provided. So I'm going to go see email uh, dot text. So I'm just getting values from my three line edits, these ones for my name, email, and telephone for my contact, and creating a person instance. This guy then becomes my best argument for ad booking. I need an arrival date, which I'm going to get from my arrival date uh, widget and my departure date widget. So here I can simply go, I'm going to put a comma here to separate these things. So I can go arrival date, dot date. I can go departure date, dot date. So that's for my, so I'm getting these from, my widgets arrival date is that in the right arrival date departure date. I think that's fine. Then sorry, extra comma. Then my third argument is again your guest, your first guest, and then your second guest. So at this point, you know, I can, for example, I can just use my contact as my guest, but my user interface is a role for guest one. So I'm going to create a guest here. So I can go person, sorry, person. This one is a pointer, guest one, because, sorry, because new person. And then I'm going to use my guest two widgets. So my guest one widget, sorry. So I'm going to go there. So it's going to be G name dot text, uh, G telephone dot text, and G email dot text. So this is from my guest widget, from my guest widgets. Then this guest here becomes my guest one. Here, yeah, that's my fourth argument in my function, guest one. Now, the second guest is optional, right? So I could, if I want here, just go person guest two equals, just make it a now, right? So I can just that and use uh, what did I do here? Person, and then use this as my second argument. So I'm always going to provide that. Then I can have an if statement here that then says if your type of guest is single, then that's fine. If your type of guest is sharing, then you initialize it. So for things like that, I can go with uh, if. Um, sorry, excuse me. Right, sorry. Yeah, so you can go if, if your 
what did I call this combo box? So I've got a combo box that I'm using somewhere here. Booking type, yes, that's what I want. So I can do things like if my booking type dot current uh, text is equal to sharing, then only then do I have the initialize the second one. So I can go to two equals no person. Then I can use my guest two widgets. I'm gonna put it from here. And this now just two name, just two telephone, just two email, and there you go. So, um, just two, just two, okay, yeah, that's fine. So, and then once I've got everything I want, yeah, then I can add booking, and you can show a message here that says booking has been added, whatever you want to do. So, that's our add booking. Um, function. And it's pretty simple, straightforward, which means we can now create as many guests as we want. And once you create a guest, you can reset your widgets. So for, for your assignments, you are required to do a lot of like everything to show that you understand what's going on, to create a user interface that is usable, that is interactive and user-friendly, you know, UX will be on point. So that's where you can do things like resetting all your widgets, um, graying out, whatever the user doesn't need to enter. For example, if your booking type is single, you can gray out all those other you know, things. And those things, yeah, it's, and it's not difficult things to do really. It's, if you spend an extra you know, moment, you can spend some extra time tweaking your application to reflect those things. But again, for now, I'm just gonna ignore everything. Now for our right bookings, um, let's just build and see that I haven't cared any, uh, any errors so far it's also good just to keep on building your application so that you can detect issues earlier instead of writing a whole bunch of code and then you try and scroll through a thousand errors now once we've done this um if we run it now we don't see anything because just going to create bookings and we want to be able to to see them but what i'm going to do is just show a message really that tells us how many bookings we've got so i'm going to go um i should include queue, message box and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to just display a message i'm going to go queue message box um information sorry information okay, there we go uh it doesn't matter and i can go queue string number and let's just show how many bookings we've got. So I'm gonna go booking list dot, uh, what am I doing here? List dot, do we have a function here? Number of bookings. Oh, there's a to string function. What does it do? Uh, return, I think it does return append to string. It does return a list of bookings. Yeah, so you can you can use that. So I'm just actually going to, in my widget, uh, yeah, I'm just going to show those bookings and see what they look like. So I'm going to go booking list dot string. So this is just to show a message with all the bookings. But again, you can have a, a, um, a line, a, a cute text edit on your user interface that you update with your bookings instead of using a message box like i'm saying you can get really creative with these questions and provide a user interface that is interactive just look at it from a user perspective if you were creating an actual booking system what would you want to see obviously don't overdo it but within the scope of this question you could do some creative things so if we run this we should be able to create a few bookings and, uh, and use them, right? So I can go with contact name here. I can put some, you know, email. Nothing is being validated, really. Um, so I'm just going to go one, two, three. Um, guest name, I can go with um, there. Um, let's go email two. I don't know some number 
and let's go with the full guest, right? Let's go with um let's use, yeah, let's go with like email three and some random number. Let's do a sharing thing. Let's go add booking. Now, I don't have any messages showing me that something has happened, which is again things you would have to do if, if you want a nice you know, response from your application. But if I click that, um there's nothing here. I don't see any booking, which means something is actually going wrong. And the reason why this is important is uh wait. The reason why this is important is you don't want to go to the xml and see things not working and you have no idea why stuff is not working so let's try and figure out why our bookings are not showing and booking right bookings nothing okay so let me booking text let's do that booking list that's fine booking list at booking that should work let me just put a message here that says booking added. Just to make sure that it's actually going there. Booking added. Okay. Um, what else? That should be it. Let's see. Try that. I want with. I'm just gonna put some random things here. See if it's actually doing anything. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I forgot my departure date and my arrival date. So, the, oh, okay. <laughs> Let's fix this. I don't have dates here. So that's why it's empty. Um, actually, you know what? What you should do is this returns a Boolean, right? So let's do it like this. Boo, um, success equals. Because this returns a Boolean if it actually creates a booking. So let's do it like that. Then we can go. Um, if uh, success, then show this message. Um, else, maybe show a warning message. Um, something like error sending booking. So let's go with the warning here. Booking not added. Then we can go error editing booking. Okay, let's do that. So if we don't change anything, <clears throat> it should tell us that there was no booking created and whatever. Let's see, so if I go at booking, yeah, that's why. So let's do our dates here. Let's go back to, I need to fix my user interface. I didn't realize that I didn't have um, my date edits in the right position, arrival date, departure date. So I need to have those. Okay, let's do that. Um, let me do this. So let's have um, arrival date here. Let's have pressure date here. That's going to be here and that's going to be there. And then we can have our um, buttons there and there. Okay, that should make sense. Okay, perfect. So if we do some random text here and here and here and here and here and here and there, then we can put our, you can set these dates to minimum, maximum, but I'm just going to go with, um, how did this, which ones are the year, months and, okay, so it's month, day, year. Okay, that's fine. Oh, 12, 1, and I'm going to go 12, doesn't really matter, I'm going to go 5. So yeah, other validation is you can also make sure that your dates are not less than today. So this should be you know something like that. And this should also be something like that. I don't know if they did validation, but anyway, it's added. So if we go right bookings here, we should now see that our booking is here. Um we can now do, you know, more bookings. You know, let's do a sharing booking. Let's go. Add booking, that's fine. Go write bookings, and we see now that we've got two bookings. So this then means that we've got our bookings working well, um, only that it's printing them as text. Whereas the requirement for this question is to print them as XML, which means we should print 
this same data, but in an XML format, which is what we discussed here, it should come back in this format. And once we can do this, then we have understood how to write XML with DOM. Now, to before we get there uh, to actual you know, writing of XML and doing the actual bookings, we want to, you know, we've always said that whenever you are doing something that serializes, you know, writes to a file, creates XML, you should do this as a separate file, or as a separate class, sorry. So what we should do here is to create um, a class. I can call this booking writer or, you know, yeah, bookings writer, if I want, whatever you call it. But we just need a class that is going to be serializing our bookings to a file. And likewise, if you need to read, if you need to read anything from a file, which is also part of this question, you create a class that is responsible for reading from a file. In that case, we'll do that when we discuss SACS using this example. But for now, let's just create an XML writer. Now, the most important thing is once you've got your, your XML writer, you for for writing XML with DOM or for using DOM, we are going to be using the QDOM document class, right? So in our booking writer, we need to hash include QDOM document. This is the class we're going to use for writing XML. And as you can see right now, it actually says, I cannot find this class, right? So what you can do is if you just go on Google and go through the documentation for QDOM document, usually the first option, um, they will show you that you need to include this. If you are doing a QMake application, then you go to a .profile and you add this. If you are doing a CMake application, then you have to go to your, um, C, your list.txt file and you do this. This will activate or enable XML packages in your solution. And then we can actually now find that QDOM document class. So we need to do this find package thing and this target link libraries thing, Qt XML 6. Um, so you then head over to your XML text thing. Usually you would have these already in your solution as part of the existing components. So you're not going to copy paste this. You just want to go and add um, XML to this find packages thing. And you want to go and add Qt6 uh, XML to your target link libraries. So what I would then do is go to your TXT file and find my find packages. And I'm simply going to add XML here. Um, also do that um, here. Um, and we're going to go and find our link libraries thing here. Um, and I am going to add is this the, yeah, here. I'm going to add Qt6 dot um, XML like that. So once you do this, your class should now be found and you no longer have an error here. So that is the uh, one of the first steps you need to do in order to activate XML in your class. Now, the next thing we can do, we can now create a function here that's going to write XML. So we can make it a Boolean function. So we can go boo write uh, XML or boo um, serialize uh, bookings. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it write XML, right? Um, boo um, write XML. And this function is going to receive, um, I can say it receives a booking list instance. Or I can say it just receives a queue list of bookings because there's a get list function. So I can say, give this function um, where to write the XML and give it a queue list of type booking, right? Uh, bookings like that. And obviously we have to include, hash include. Um, so I can do a forward here, uh, class booking. Um, I have to include bookings. I have to include my Q string. So I'm going to go ash include Q string like that. Okay. So that's my function for writing XML, which means inside this function, we're going to then, you know, receive the path where to write the XML and give this function our bookings. And we then create our XML, 
We also then need to include um, our queue file. We also need to include the usual suspects queue um, text stream. And once we've got our booking bookings writer, I can then come back to my widget and include it here. Um, bookings writer. And I cannot create, oh, I need to actually include here. Um, I should include bookings writer. Now I can have an object that I can use, uh, bookings writer, writer, for instance. And in my write bookings function, I can simply call this write function. So I can go uh, writer dot write XML. I can give this a path. And I can give this my bookings. My bookings, I can go to booking list dot get list. And that's it. So this is path to the file, which you can get from a user using the QFile dialog. But we can discuss that later. So this is the setup, right? We've got a class responsible for writing our XML. Just going to call this function. So if this is successful, we're going to show this message. If it fails, we're going to show a message like we did here. Uh, same thing, because I said it returns a Boolean, so you can do that. Or you can make it a void function, whatever your logic, uh, you, you want your logic to be. And that's our right XML function. And we're just going to use it, which means in our next class, what we then want to do is go straight into building the actual XML. How do you take these bookings from a list and end up with XML that looks like this. That's where we are going. So we've talked about the solution. We know the setup. We know the bookings that we have. Um, we know what we are trying to do. We've activated XML. We've put the libraries in. We now just need to build the XML using QDOM documents. So what I'm going to do in our next class is start he here in this function and start writing XML. So we'll do the Q file thing to write our file, and then we'll do our QDOM document. And, and that should be all about how to write XML with QDOM document. So because we're using an example, we do have to discuss the solution, understand what it looks like. It always helps because you need this knowledge for doing your assignments, because I understand that sometimes we can just talk about how to write XML, but then some of you will struggle how to put everything together because you don't get, uh, when they ask you, they give you this. They give you, like this was an assignment in one of the years before. Um, and that's what they give you. So now to put everything together, even though at the end of the day, we just want you to understand how to use DOM and how to use SACS. There's a whole, you know, boilerplate code you've got to do before you can get to actually doing DOM, like in this case. So yeah, today we just wanted to set up the example, make sure that we understand what's going on. I'll upload the solution. And then in our next class, we're going to start by discussing how to use QDOM document to serialize XML. And you realize that it's actually very easy. It's about five functions we need to discuss. You know how to use those five functions. Your life is good. So it's one of the simplest things you can do. Uh, it's easy. DOM is easy. So we'll do that in our next class.